The Book of Genesis Part 38 The Book of Genesis Part 38 James Gunn In order to complete our study of what has been well called the Calvary chapter of the Book of Genesis, Chapter 22, we must examine its evangelical application. Let us remember, at the same time, that every allegorical consideration of Holy Scripture demands that we control our imagination, and that we not indulge in that which is merely fanciful and novel. This type of study is illustrative and nothing more. Let us now turn our attention to Isaac, and see in his experience an illustration of a man who by grace was saved apart from any effort of his own. The Burden And Abraham took the wood, and laid it upon Isaac his son, v.6. This must have been of considerable weight, much fuel would be required for the purpose. This weight Isaac carried to Moriah, and there it disappeared forever at the altar. Isaac never again felt its pressure nor did he sense its bulk. Fallen man bears the heavy load of personal sin, and, frequently, imposes that mass upon others. The psalmist felt all this and wrote, Yeah, in heart ye work wickedness, ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb, Psalms 58 verses 2-3. The Cry Isaac raised the question with his father, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? V.7, all was evident to Isaac. The means of total destruction, the knife, the fire, and the wood, were ready, but what or who was the victim? There may have been a slight tone of apprehension in his voice as he made the inquiry. The glorious results of the cross work of Christ are seen in that he delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage, Hebrews 2 verse 15. While this passage in Hebrews may refer to the full deliverance of Old Testament saints from all charge of guilt, it reveals the fact that man lives in the fear of death and destruction. The expectation of the wicked is wrath, Proverbs 11 verse 23. Hope. Let us think of Abraham's reply, God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering, v. 8. Did Abraham see through the telescope of faith and hope the sacrifice of Christ? There are some who feel that the Lord's words to the Jews in the temple may be interpreted in such a way, Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and was glad, John 8 verse 56. This reply of Abraham must have brought relief to Isaac. Whatever secret dread may have gripped his heart would be stilled, for divine provision would meet the need and supply the only means of acceptance with God. What a gospel message! What good news! With his fears allayed and high hope in his heart, Isaac moved on to Moriah. Substitution Abraham bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood, v. 9. Isaac was fettered and about to die, the very burden he had carried was to consume him, all hope vanished from his mind. In that dark moment, Isaac heard the word of God, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, and knew that his life was spared. How his life was spared, he did not fully understand, until, Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son, the 13. Isaac lived, but his substitute, the substitute provided by God, died. Throughout all the centuries in which Levitical ritualism was practiced in Israel, God impressed upon his people the fact that salvation, from the consequence of sin, death, was on the basis of substitution. How fully the Apostle Paul apprehended this, said he, the Son of God loved me, and gave himself for me, Galatians 2 verse 20. Abraham gave a ram in the stead of Isaac his son, but Paul declares that Christ gave himself voluntarily for the believer. In that voluntary sacrifice of Christ the believer is accepted before God. He hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption. Ephesians 1 verses 6-7 Life Isaac, the one who had been exposed to death, was alive and stood to watch the substitutionary sacrifice ascend to God. We, too, were exposed to death, in fact, in one respect, were dead, but in and through Christ we live. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, Ephesians 2 verse 1. The declaration of the Apostle John is forceful, he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life, 1 John 5 verse 12. Death It is obvious that Isaac never would have forgotten the experience when he lay bound and ready to die upon the altar, and the moment in which he saw a ram enduring that death for him. 
it would almost seem as if, in the ram, he, Isaac, had died. While it is true that we who believe live in Christ, it is equally true that we died in Christ. The words of the Apostle Paul come to mind, I am crucified with Christ, Galatians 2 verse 20. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that ye henceforth should not serve sin, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, Romans 6 verse 6 and 11. They that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts, Galatians 5 verse 24. The Christian definitely is to be identified with the death of Christ. Resurrection We know that Abraham considered the return of Isaac with him from Moriah as a resurrection. Thoughts of God's power to raise the dead filled his mind as he went to offer his son. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, Hebrews 11 verses 17 to 19. In all probability to Isaac it also was a resurrection. How like the child of God! Of all true believers we read, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, Romans 6 verse 5. While might the apostle exhort the Colossians, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, Colossians 3 verse 1. May we, who like Isaac were once exposed to death, live in the power of our resurrection with and in Christ Jesus. Asterisk Teach us to look in all our ends on thee for judge, and not our friends, that we, with thee, may walk uncowed by fear or favor of the crowd. Rudyard Kipling <laughs>